Hi beauties, welcome to my channel HI Beauty by Yulia. I'm Yulia and I'm your virtual beauty therapist. If you are new here, welcome! Uh, I have been beauty therapist for the past 10 years, so I created this channel in order to keep you stay healthy and informed about beauty. If this is something that you find interesting, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up, share it, comment below. Now, if you like also giveaway plus tips, advices and ideas about your skincare routine as well as quite a few product reviews, you can find me on Instagram. I will do a Valentine's Day giveaway so you can participate if you're UK based as well. Being cautious because you have sensitive, sensitized skin or you have some kind of skin condition is one thing. Vilifying ingredients for me personally it's something completely different. So saying that 10 ingredients that all science research says are okay, but Killeen Beauty says they are not okay. For me, it's a little bit too much and I don't understand. However, a lot of people keep repeating things for certain ingredients especially. And I decided to do this video in order to clear a little bit the air and I hope you understand why they are not so bad, they are not toxic, they are not dangerous, they are not causing cancer. In order for something to be in your product, it has to be proven safe. Yes, in the future we might find that something is not, but whether it will be something that Clean Beauty is saying it's good or Clean Beauty is saying it's bad, we still don't know. Parabens is not one ingredient, it's not one paraben. There's a lot of different types of parabens. There's three, four that you can see mainly in your skincare product. I will add them here or here, we'll see. But my point is that actually these are different compounds. They have different size of molecule, they have different structure. So even if they do or don't affect us in a negative way, it will be differently because they are different. But anyway, with this left on side, what I mean is that parabens are um, esters of p-hydroxybenzoic acid. So even today, although all the finger pointing towards them, still there's around 20, 30,000 different uh, cosmetic products that still contain parabens. If they were so bad, I really think that they <laughs> would be I don't know, much more restricted, maybe they will be um, forbidden to use into skincare products, at least in certain countries, but that's really not the case. The reason being is because if there is just one type of paraben, the maximum amount in your product will be 0.4%. If there's a few different types of parabens, still the maximum of them into your skincare product will be 0.8%. So in each case, it will be less than 1% of parabens into your skincare product. And this is very important to understand because the quantity does make the poison. And this is a very small amount of quantity that you will apply topically on the skin. And uh, very often you will see studies that are um, from clean brands that are saying yes but we have proven that this or the other are bad including with parabens and very often they will be something like um, skin cells in a lab so it's a sample not a real human tissue we react differently or it will be animals and for good or bad I'm not a bunny so <laughs> this is also not the same like my skin will likely react yes there's thousands of products that are still with parabens but also the ones that are no longer with parabens you have to understand that many of them were purely from the consumer's pressure so if you like a product and then you find that it has paraben a lot of the brands found that their sales went down so they could either lose money because they have parabens in their products or they will change towards a different type of preservatives in order to keep the cells up. According to many of the skin experts, they will say that all the, all the quoting <laughs> that you will find online, there is no concrete linkage between the use of parabens in skincare products and breast cancer. To be honest with you, 
parabens were deemed as one of the safest uh, preservatives by the American Contact Dermatite Dermatitis Association. So you have people who suffer from skin condition, you have professionals, physicians, scientists that are looking into this type of conditions and they are saying if you have sensitive skin use product with parabens because so far we know that this is the safest preservative if you do have irritable skin. Moreover, even if you look into um, the FDA in the States, they say, let me just quote it to be completely right. So, no information showing that parabens as they are using cosmetics have an effect on human health. Some people might be sensitive towards parabens by all means, yes, it is possible. But in general, towards whether parabens or other preservatives, you might feel some kind of sensitivity because of the way that they work. So whether phenoxyethanol, whether it will be parabens, whether it will be something like um, radish fermented extract, preservatives might be irritating for people in general. I just wanted to mention also that there was in 2008 a safety review um, that was concluding this. Although parabens do penetrate the stratum corneum, metabolism of parabens takes place within viable skin, which is likely to result in only 1% unmetabolized parabens available for absorption into the body. This is a very, very, very small amount. So from what you have as a 1%, less than 1%, certainly, will be just maximum of 1% of this 1% will be actually maybe absorbed into the body. And this is very important to understand. I will add this research in the description box if you want to have a look on it where my information is coming from if you're curious to see it. Plus the fact that they are um, endocrine disruptors. I mean, the estrogen that our own body is producing, the one that you can find in foods like soy is much more, it's much different, stronger if you want to say, than the one that you can get from topical skincare product. So... Another very estrogenic ingredient that you will find uh, along with the parabens are um, chemical sunscreen filters. The study that very often is quoted is actually about rats. So what the scientists did was they fed the rats with um, oxybenzone, which is a chemical SPF filter. Uh, so they fed them very, very extensively for a short period of, uh, of time. And afterwards they found with this exposure that the rats had enlarge uterus. <laughs> so first of all, obviously I'm not rat, I'm not gonna eat parabens. But also if you look about the same amount of parabens exposure into human, that means that when we're looking into some blocks, you have to apply as a human being for 35 years, 35 years, uh, very, very extensively, this um, SPF uh, filter, oxybenzone, and on the top of this, you should not be sweating for 35 years. I still don't understand how these two can be really compared, but the fact is that this is the study that you will find quoted very, very extensively everywhere that proves that chemical filters are so dangerous. Then you do have the other one that is uh, from groups like the Environmental Working Group uh, that um, they did some kind of their study that uh, found traces from these um, chemical filters into the bloodstream and that's why they concluded that these filters are dangerous for our health. However, if you think about it, if I drink coffee you'll find traces of uh, caffeine into my bloodstream but no one is saying how dangerous is this so once again this is not really proof of any potential danger because we keep using them 
if we are looking into some of those filters and how they are endangering the uh, sea life then yes this is concern of mine definitely I don't mean that they're all great but my point is that the studies that we are looking into that are saying how dangerous and toxic and causing cancer they are are not really real and they are not really such a great conclusion or proof of such claims. Mineral oil is a byproduct of a petrol refining processes. So this is really what you think about as a dirty type of ingredient. And this is what a lot of beauty, clean beauty brands will tell you. It's, you know, it's very bad. It's very toxic. It's very awful. But the truth is that in order to be in your skincare, this is extremely refined type of product. You can have a petroleum jelly, which is used, um, say, into engineering, which is completely different than the one that you will have into your skincare product. It has been refined a few times and it has been used for the past 150 years. We have a lot of information, a lot of data about it. We know that it is a very occlusive. That's why if you have oily skin, you might have reaction towards it. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's an awful, dangerous type of ingredient because it is actually one of the best film creating ingredients and it's also very cheap. So if you can't afford, say, um, I don't know, some kind of lotion for your baby's bum, this is something that you can use and this is something that even your um, GP will uh, tell you that you can use. If you had the operation, this is what you will have apply afterwards because it will improve the skin barrier, it will help with healing, it will um, protect from outside environment, it will keep the moisture inside. It doesn't contain nutrients, but it keeps everything that you already apply under. So that's why also if you didn't cleanse very well your makeup and you apply petroleum jelly, you might have some issue with it. I did a whole video about um, Vaseline or petroleum jelly and slugging and I added a lot of different ways that you can use it and benefit from the use of it. That doesn't mean that it's great for someone with acne and oily skin, but doesn't mean that it's toxic, it's toxic or dirty. It's just not suitable for everyone. That doesn't make it so awful. Mineral oil has been used for a very long time ago as a pesticide into organic farming. So products that this is the way that uh, you know the ingredients whether fruits or vegetables or flowers whatever you have in your products if this is how um, the person growing them has been fighting and been using mineral oil as pesticides some traces will be found afterwards in the ingredients that you actually have in your product as I was talking about um, petroleum jelly, I do have to mention silicones and dimethicone. According to some clean beauty brands, they are very toxic and they are poor clogging and you should avoid them. But actually this is not backed by any type of scientific research. On the contrary, if you see oil free, which is very suitable for uh, someone with combination oily acne skin, very likely you will see dimethicone. The reason being is because this helps for your product to apply very easily so foundations very likely um, creams you will see very often with some kind of um, dimethicone or silicones inside and also it is not as occlusive as uh, petroleum jelly so it let it really actually lets the skin to breathe as well in fact what we have a study is that most of the silicones uh, can easily break down not just from the body but from the environment so therefore they don't pose any risk that we know about truly <laughs> the last from the common enemy ingredients are sulfates so usually the one that we are saying are so bad are sls or SLES. So these are sodium low red sulfate and sodium low real sulfate. Um, the problem with them is that they are too good for their own good, if you ask me. Um, so 
they are very common, they are very used as surfactants. What they do is that they will remove the oil from the skin. So this might be too irritating for someone with sensitive skin. For instance, sometimes if I am flaky for some reason, I will try to find a cleanser that doesn't contain them. Once again, this is personal preference. That doesn't mean that they are all bad. You have to understand with strong active ingredients like those that the formula and their quantity into the product are extremely extremely important because if the formula is good and everything is balanced you have other ingredients that will make it less aggressive you have small amount of sls into your cleanser then you should not have any issue whatsoever with your product so they're not so bad as um, you know clean brands are saying. Yeah. I hope you just like me continue to ask why something is working or not working or dangerous and not just keep quoting what you have read in the last articles and you have seen in the last video, in the last post because we have to, for me personally, understand the science behind the beauty. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you give it thumbs up, share it consider subscribing to the channel. Find me on Instagram as well because I'm quite active there. I publish a lot of tips, advices, ideas, what bothers me and excites me and a lot of product reviews as well as giveaways. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye bye!